Well, good morning, everybody. It's me, Mitch, and today we're going to have another one of those cook and talk type videos. It's not really a recipe. What I'm doing today is I'm doing something that I do every couple of weeks, and that is prepping a bunch of food and putting it away, maybe refreezing some of it, some of it in the refrigerator. So I've got a lot of stuff ready to eat. And what I've got going on here today is down here in this slow cooker, I've got a uh, four pound chunk and it is uh, about halfway done. I started it early in the morning before I went to the gym and uh, it should be it should be done, and I actually may eat some of that for my first meal at 1 o'clock. But uh, what I wanted to do primarily today was prep these baby back ribs that I picked up at Sam's Club the other morning. I did freeze the other half of that uh, that humongous chuck and it's buried back in here. There's another four pound hunk. And I think I'm getting pretty good. Not only is my freezer outside full, but I got just a ton of stuff in here. It's last of my wings. I got to remember to buy some more wings. And I think the next time instead of wings, I'm going to get a bunch of chicken thighs instead. My channel is about how an old guy lives a carnivore lifestyle and this is it. Now whether you want to live the lifestyle that I live, that's uh, probably not going to happen because each one of us has a different um, different set of things in our lives. So many of you are married. I'm not. Um, so I live by myself as a bachelor. I spent over 35 years of my life married and I've been there and done that. And I find that uh, I enjoy the lack of responsibility, and I look after myself. And I didn't feel that way 10, 15 years ago. I always thought that uh, I needed companionship in my life, but uh, you know, don't feel sorry for older people who are alone. Sometimes it's actually a better life for them. But just because something is, happens to be a better life for me does not mean that it's the life for you. I have my children. I'm not really involved with them. They have their own lives on a daily basis, but they're my kids. They're there. And we have a great, uh, we have a great family. So what I got here is I got some uh, pork baby back ribs. And they're pretty cheap. They cost me... Uh, it's three dollars a pound, two ninety-eight a pound. There's two racks in here, and I'm going to try to, if I can figure out a way to do it, cook them all up. I may, after they're cooked, I may refreeze one of them, but uh, we're going to do this today. And uh, try not to make too much of a mess in the process. I got up this morning and I made the, the daily mistake that I make every day and I don't know why I keep doing it and punishing myself, but I turned on, turned on the news and I don't know, 
I started off the day in less than a joyous mood after listening to the news this morning and the uh, and the daily crisis signaling the end of life as we know it and the end of the world and what I need to be worried about and what might happen in the next not the next few years, but the next few minutes. We're getting to a point right now where the word crisis, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we used to, we used to have a crisis every day. But we seem to have one now. The crisis of this morning, well, there's two crises I need crises <laughs> that I need to worry about today. Uh, the first one is uh, what's going on in Washington, D.C. And that accomplishes, accom that uh, encompasses many things, but the crisis of today, besides uh, the impeachment and besides the uh, all the political stuff which I really hate to talk about is the shutdown. We have we have to worry now because our our elected leaders can't seem to come together on anything, I mean virtually anything. We are, we are so divided right now that uh, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I've always known we're divided, but every vote on every subject is split right down the middle, black or it's white. If you say black, I'm going to say white. Every vote, at least on the on the Democrat side, we still got a few Republicans that uh, act like independent thinkers. But and these people that are up in Congress, it's disturbing because they we elect them, we vote for them, and we elect them to be our voice. And somehow, I just don't want to believe that. All of us as Americans, and we are all Americans, actually are that divided. I mean, we're divided about a lot of things. We, we're divided over rooting for our sports teams. We're, we're divided over the brand of cars that we buy. It seems like there's no shortage of things that we are competing with each other. And that's okay. Competition is great. But when you start taking the competition to levels of violence because somebody disagrees with you, it's very disturbing. And it is disturbing to me every day when I watch the news. So today, I've got another hurricane forming off the coast of Africa that they're telling me, again, might come and blow my house away. Got to worry about that. And I got to worry about whether our government's going to shut down, although there's a debate about whether that might not be the best thing that could happen. Unfortunately, everybody relies on the money that comes from this government. Now what I'm doing here is I'm removing the membrane on the back of these ribs. The consensus seems to be that removing this membrane is something you should do. Although I did hear one, I did hear one chef on a video I watched about how to make ribs 
who was, I guess, basically worried about nutrition, I did hear one chef say that he likes to leave the, the membrane on because, and I, it might have been Ken Berry, I don't remember who it was, it was somebody in, in the carnivore space that was talking about preparing things. And they said that there, there may be some nutritional value to the membrane. And the way I'm removing it is the, the easiest way I've found, not that I'm a great barbecue chef or anything, but what I found was you take a butter knife, not a sharp knife, but a dull pointed knife, and you can get it under the membrane and get it started. And that's, that's, and then the thing is so slippery <laughs> that you got to have a paper towel and you grab on to the membrane with the paper towel and that, that allows you to hold on to it. And then you, you just peel it back and away we go. And it, you should come off in a big piece like this. Oh yeah, that was a good one. And that's it. The benefits of removing this membrane from these ribs are that it, when you season it, it lets the seasoning get in the back. And what that membrane is, it's the peritoneum of the cow. We have a peritoneum, which is basically just like that membrane. And it, it, it's on the inside of our ribs and keeps all our guts in place, I guess. It acts as a barrier and it, and it is pretty tough, but it's very thin and it peels, peels off the ribs just fine. Now, I don't trim any other fat off of these things. There's not, there's not a lot of fat on them. And I just basically cook them like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them into half racks. So let's... Let's cut them here, since these are the small ribs on this side. So we're going to cut this into a half rack. And I'm going to do the same with this one. There you go. Cut it right, right here. Okay, so now I got four half racks of ribs, and I figure each one of these half racks is going to make a meal for me. So let's get rid of the plastic. And I'm going to cook these things in a sheet pan. And we're going to uh, cook them at 275 degrees wrapped in foil to keep the to keep the moisture in. I'm going to cook them for maybe two and a half, three and a half hours, somewhere somewhere in there. And After that, we're going to uh, going to cook them either on the barbecue grill or. just broil them in the oven but we'll bake them after I cook them and get them to where they're they're beginning to get pretty tender oh I forgot something that's what happens when you're concentrating on a video you gotta season these things now I I just being carnivore we're certainly uh we're not going to have barbecue sauce, although I did, I did buy some of this stuff 
because I thought I could use a little sauce. And uh, when I looked at the ingredient, I got it. When I looked at the ingredients of it, I decided not to use it because it's got cornstarch and and uh, salt, uh, onion, caramel, col natural caramel color, uh, xanthan. I don't know. Originally, I thought that just a tiny little bit wouldn't hurt me, but I've decided, and I don't know if I decided it or my brain decided it for me, but I decided that uh, I like the natural taste of meat better. One of the problems in making all this barbecue stuff is uh, you don't taste the meat. All the flavor comes from all the crap you put on it, between the sugared sauces and all the spices and everything. And I, and I understand why that's delicious, but that also takes a, a perfectly good hunk of meat and uh, and spoils it, in, in my opinion. And I think that just salt seems to be best, seems to be the way I like it. So we'll just salt these and it, not even too much salt. We'll rub it in a little bit. Put these over. Salt this again. Okay. And wrap them up in a tent-like affair here to, uh, to seal in the steam and the flavor. And hopefully that's all we need to do. Do this. And that's going to be good enough. And I think we can fit two of these on this one half sheet pan. Let me turn the oven on here. Bake at uh, 275 degrees. Let's start that. And we'll wrap up the other, the other ribs. Anyway, I was talking about the crisis of the day, and I already did a video where I talked about the uh, deleterious effects of of stress on everything that we're trying to uh, that we're trying to accomplish here, being carnivores. And, I just uh, get stressed out over this stuff, and I shouldn't. I keep trying. I, I, I remember I did a video. I entitled it Zen, Zen Carnivore, but it's getting harder and harder to remain in that Zen mindset when half the time you wonder, is our future, do we even have a future in this, in this world with all the crap going on? Our country's being invaded. Our government wants to give these people the, the right to vote and, and elect the people that make the laws. These people that are coming into our country illegally are coming and fleeing countries that have done exactly the things that we're doing to ruin our country. And I wonder if uh, there won't come a time in the near future where we become Venezuela and the exodus starts happening in the other, in the other direction. And how silly would that be? Nothing I can do about it. I promised myself I wouldn't stress out and I wouldn't worry about it. I can always find people to talk to who agree that it is a problem. And identifying the problem is not the problem. Everybody knows what the problem is. The problem is nobody's solving any of these friggin' problems. So I had a bad morning this morning and my mind was going to places that it shouldn't. It was going to places like 
and I'm sure any of you who are getting older and looking around at what's going on in the world today have thought to yourself, why am I trying to extend my lifespan when I'm becoming convinced that there won't even be a world worth living in? And that's a hard, uh, that's a hard thing to come to terms with. I don't want to get everybody down here, but this is the reality. I mean, I, I have overcome a lot of adver adversity in my life and I've gotten to a point now where I have a simple life pretty much and I've gotten health I've never had and I and I look at the world and I think of my kids and my grandkids and what what is it that they're going to inherit my generation it's pretty much done except for some of the Methuselah as we still allow to be in Congress, but uh, <laughs> it's my kids' generations right now that are going to need to do something about this for their kids. Okay. All I can do, and I will tell you that going to the gym this morning really helped. Really helped. I may sound down, but I'm really not. Uh, had a good workout. I'm feeling good. I'm making my food. Wow, that's some that's some ribs. So what I got on this tray, which weighs a lot, is like what was it like fifteen dollars or something for that whole that whole thing? And I like ribs, so we're gonna put these in the oven here, and that's gonna go. It is 10 o'clock now. I would say about 1 o'clock, 12.30, 1 o'clock, I will come back and take a look at them. And we'll see how they're coming out. I'm going to look for an internal temperature uh, of a, a little over 200 degrees. And that'll tell me it's time to uh, start worrying about finishing them. So, hopefully... Clear minds will prevail, and the weather patterns will keep that hurricane off of my doorstep, and the world won't come to an end before I get to enjoy what is like a week's supply of food here that I'm cooking. I do that. Uh, I do that. I do that uh, once every couple of weeks. I decide. Let me just prep up a bunch of stuff. Because normally I just eat, you know, bacon, eggs, and some kind of beef. But I like a little bit of variety within the confines of the foods that we can eat on, on carnivore. We'll see you a little while, in a little while when all this stuff is ready to take to the next level. Okay, let's check on this chuck. It should be done now. And... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, shred it up. Oh, yeah, this just falls apart. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, man, this is going to be good. Yeah, let's give it a whirl here. Mmm. Mmm. God, is that tasty? Mmm. was a 24-hour dry brine, dry brine in the fridge, eight hours on low in the crock pot, and all this liquid in here came from the meat itself. 
didn't add any liquid. And God, is it ever good. And like I've said before, everything in that liquid is nu pure nutrition. It's fat, it's collagen. God, that's terrific. Look at that. Couldn't be more pleased. We're going to pour all of that into to the container. And all of that is going to be without actually dropping this crock pot, breaking it and having everything go on the floor. So let's do it this way. Let's take this hand and use that. We'll use the towel to guide us. Ah, I got it almost, almost all of it in. And that is about four meals. So between that and the ribs today, I've made eight meals. Look at that. So, I paid $33 for two of, of these, so half of that is what's in here for four meals. So, it is a relatively inexpensive meal, considering this is a carnivore diet. There you go. So, we'll let that cool a little bit before we put it in the fridge. And we'll be back with the ribs in a little while. All right, it's been uh, three and a half hours since these ribs are in. I'm going to assume that they're done. Then we'll turn off the oven and let's get them out of there. Okay, and try to open these up and see what we got. Well, we certainly have some cooked looking ribs. I'd say they need some time in the broiler, but let's see what uh, what the internal temperature is. They certainly are falling off the bone. You can see the bone sticking out there. And what we have here internally is 200 and four and a half degrees. Perfect. You want 200 plus. So that's good. That means that they're cooked. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get and put three of them away in here. And when I'm ready to eat them, I will take them out of the fridge and I will put them under the broiler or use the barbecue grill to finish them off. But for these right now, I'm going to uh, just put them away. And let's see if they don't all fall apart. No, they are cooked. They are cooked very well. Look at that. Look at the bones sticking out. Yes, sir, they just need a little time finishing them. Okay, so that's, that's that one. in here too. Oh. 
Okay. So, we've got basically three more meals here, and I'm going to turn the broiler on to high right there. I want to take this lower rack, move it up a little bit so it's underneath the broiler. And we'll let that heat up. Get a little foil. And we'll see what happens here. We'll give it a few minutes and we'll be right back. There we go. I think that'll do it. Not the uh, not too bad looking, a little bit warm right now, I would say. But uh, let's let's see what we what we look like. Probably ought to let them cool off a little before I slice them. But uh, I know we're all a little bit anxious to see see what we got here. And there you are. looks doesn't look bad it of course doesn't look like it would if it was covered in barbecue sauce and, and sugar and garlic and onion powder and paprika and all that other crap but uh, basically just pork baby back ribs and uh, some salt let's see Mm. Not bad. Again, they're not covered with with all that sweet goopy shit, but they fall right off the bone. Mmm. The, the part that's that's broiled delicious. I like these. Well, that's not a hard way to cook them, and it's, still, it's very good. Eat your heart out. Mm. Yes, sir. Okay, so with that, I will sit down and finish off this half rack of ribs, and you guys take the rest of the day off. Eat meat. <laughs>